High atop one of the hills which ring the teeming metropolis of Gotham City, a large house rears its bulk against the dark sky. Outwardly, there's nothing to distinguish this house from many others. But deep in the cavernous basements of this house, in a chamber hewn from the living rock of the mountain, is the strange, dimly lighted, mysteriously secret Bat's Cave, hidden headquarters of America's number one crime fighter, Batman. Yes, Batman, clad in the somber costume which has struck terror to the heart of many a swaggering denizen of the underworld. Batman, who even now is pondering the plans of a new assault against the forces of crime. A crushing blow against evil in which he will have the valuable aid of his young, two-fisted assistant, Robin the Boy Wonder. They represent American youth who love their country and are glad to fight for it. Wherever crime raises its ugly head to strike with the venom of a maddened rattlesnake, Batman and Robin strike also. And in this very hour when the Axis criminals are spreading their evil over the world, even within our own land, Batman and Robin stand ready to fight them to the death. These boxes are usually locked. I know it. Captain Arnold, please. Captain Arnold speaking. I have a nice little package for you. You'll find it at the corner of First and Maple. Heavenly. Yeah, what's doing, Captain? It's the Batman again. He's at the corner of First and Maple. And this time I'm going with you. Calling car 67. 67. That's us. Go to First and Maple. A702. I'm warning you. Dr. Decker will make you regret this. Shut up! Dr. Decker? Who's that? Never mind. You'll find out. Let's wait around and see Captain Arnold's face when he gets here. No time for that. Don't forget, I've got a date. Let's go. Recognize these as the last two men of the Collins gang. I know you've been looking for them for some time. The Batman. P.S. The keys to the handcuffs are in this one's pocket. Well, it looks as though the Batman has done you boys another favor. Yeah. You ought to put him on a force. You find him. I'll put him on. Up. I won't be a minute. Oh, no, Harry, I'll just relax a moment. It may settle my nerves. Listen, will you keep your hands out of there? You've had your usual busy day, I suppose. Yep, up at the crack of noon, a brisk walk to the corner, and then the club for a rugged afternoon of gin rummy. Maybe you'll be too tired to go with me tomorrow to meet Uncle Martin. No, no, I'll be right with you. Thanks. Oh, it'll mean so much to him to know that he still has his friends despite all that trouble he was in. Only do me a favor. Let's not start too early. I'm always tired in the morning. All right. You're liable to carry that masquerade too far. Think so? Yes, I do. Why don't you let her know who you really are instead of letting her think you're just a good for nothing playboy? Well, if she knew I was the Batman, she might worry. Not that she cares anything about me. Besides, on account of our special assignment from Uncle Sam, our success depends on keeping our identity a secret. And suppose she asks you about your status in the Army? Well, I always tell her I'm a 4F. That was fast. Well, I don't keep people waiting like someone I know. Captures Colin Gang. Extra, extra. Hey, boy, take him. Oh. Extra. The Batman is certainly marvelous, isn't he? Oh, I think he's a show off. 
Oh, everybody that does anything is a show off to you. I can do things, too. I'll show you. I'll call for you tomorrow and take you to meet your uncle, no matter how early you want to leave, even if it's before noon. It's nice of you to make such a terrific sacrifice on my account. That looks like Warren. Yeah, that's him. My old cellmate. Hi, Marty, old boy. Why, hello, Foster. I, I don't... Do. I know. You didn't think your old pal would remember you, did you? Well, I'm expecting my niece to pick me your up. Your niece? Oh, sure, I know. That's what we came to tell you. She couldn't make it. We're going to take you to her. Come on. in that car. You're seeing things, Marty. Stop the car! Pipe down, Marty. You're going with us. Now sit back and relax. Why? Why, what do you want from me? You'll find out soon enough. Has uh, Mr. Warren left already? Yes, ma'am. Two men met him and they drove off in a black sedan. Uh, thank you. He drove away with some men in that black sedan we passed back on the road. Well, get in. We'll catch him before he gets back to town. Get going, Alfred. Then he got top. I can't understand why Uncle Martin didn't wait for us. Hey, that car with a demon is right back of us. Step on it. They're, They're speeding up, sir. Drive a little faster, Alfred. They're trying to lose us. I have a strange feeling that Uncle Martin is in some kind of trouble. They're gaining on us. Can't you get any more speed out of this jalopy? Do you think we can catch them? Sure, but I hope we catch them before some speed cop catches us. They're out of sight. Release the gas and make the change. I think I'm going to turn around. Here they come. Get down. They passed us. Didn't give us a tumble. Well, let them try to figure that one out. They've disappeared, sir. There's no side roads. They just seem to have vanished. Well, Linda, I guess your uncle wasn't interested in seeing us. I can't understand his actions. Well, I guess the only thing to do is to go back to the hospital and wait for him to phone me. Yeah, and find out how he did that disappearing act. I'd like to pull it sometime when my creditors are after me. This was part of a foreign land transplanted bodily to America and known as Little Tokyo. Since a wise government rounded up the shifty-eyed Japs, it has become virtually a ghost street where only one business survives, eking out a precarious existence on the dimes of curiosity seekers. Now, this exhibit, my friend, was created by artists that know. Artists who have created some of the finest wax exhibits in all of England and France. Now, the price of admission is only 10 cents, uh, plus one cent tax per Uncle Sam. Not going to have any trouble with you, Marty, are we? Not only now you're being smart. It's, uh, it's educational. All right, gentlemen, right up these steps. And if when you come out, you don't face the greatest exhibit you ever saw, I'll refund your money. All right, folks, who's next? Just a minute, folks. I know you two want to ride low.
end of the line, Monty. Come in, Mr. Warren. The League of the New Order extends a cordial welcome to an honored guest. The League of the New Order? Yes, a group of men, all of them dishonored like yourself. But I'm not a criminal. I was convicted, yes, and sent to prison. But if the truth were known... The fact remains that you have been dishonored. Exactly like our friend Mr. Fletcher here. An excellent architect, brilliant engineer, except that some of his buildings did not quite come up to specifications. Uh, may I also present Mr. Marshall, Preston, and Wallace. Now, they are... What do you want of me? I am Dr. Daka, humble servant of His Majesty Hirohito, heavenly ruler and prince of the rising sun. By divine destiny, my country shall destroy the democratic forces of evil in the United States to make way for the new order. An order that will bring about the liberation of the enslaved people of America. Each of these men, dishonored by your corrupt form of government, is a specialist in his line and have been especially selected by me to execute the orders I received from Tokyo. We need an industrialist to round out our circle. That is why I've selected you. If you cooperate with us willingly, you shall share in the glorious victory soon to be ours. And if I refuse? You have no choice but to accept. You will work with us or be compelled to work for us. Therefore, it should be very plain to you that you should be willing to help serve my glorious emperor. Listen, Daka, or whatever your name is, I owe my allegiance to no country or order but my own. I'm an American first and always, and no amount of torture conceived by your twisted oriented brain will make me change my mind. Ah, but you are laboring under a great misapprehension. I do not believe in anything so barbaric as torture. Well... Bob! Your former partner. He was our first choice for the position you are about to assume. Unfortunately, he too attempted to resist the inevitable. Bob, old man! Don't you know me? What have you done to him? Deprived him of his ability to think. I have converted him into a zombie. He can only act as I direct. You will notice the metal headpiece from which a wire leads to the spine. Now, Mr. Warren, I would like you to look at this special microphone, the only means of communication with a zombie. When I speak into it, this slave gets the impulses through the headpiece and obeys my wishes. By this means, I have him carry out my orders, no matter how far he is from me. Interesting, isn't it? Well, return to your station. Now, what is your answer? It's still the same. Marshal Foster, take him to my electronic laboratory. Patton Jones, the door. to destroy your brain at this time because you have information which I must have while you still have your memory. I'll tell you nothing. Fletcher. Fletcher. Cyril. Have you ever heard of the truth serum, Mr. Warren? It's one of the New Order's favorite weapons. Hold him. 
Mr. Warren, you were one of the men who went out the Gotham City Foundation. Therefore, you should be able to give me the information which I need. have they on hand at the Gotham City Foundation? Several grams. Where do they keep it? In the safe behind a picture in Dr. Borden's dispensary. Do you know the combination? No, I do not. Preston, lock him up. Fortunately, I do not have to have the combination. But how are we going to crack? What do you want that radium for? I will show you. Captain Jones, the block. Gentlemen, this is the new war, the secret weapon. Marshal, give me a capsule. This weapon employs an infinitesimal amount of radium. It is a small yet deadly forerunner of the atom smasher, which, when perfected, will smash anything that lies in our way to victory. Now, let me demonstrate its destructive effects. Break it and return to your station. I would step over this way, gentlemen, if I were you. Foster, I want you particularly to see this. There are several adjustments for power on this weapon. However, the weakest will suffice for this operation. Preston, step back and observe. Now watch what happens to that solid block of cement. <laughs> This block was originally concrete. What? Yes. Now you understand why I must have more radium. Why, sure. With more radium, we can build a weapon bigger than that gun. Exactly. We can build a lethal mechanism so destructive as to make retaliation by the United Nations impossible. However, this weapon will suffice to open the safe at the Gotham City Foundation. And I am giving you that design. We've been back over an hour and he hasn't called yet. Oh, don't worry about your uncle. I'm sure he'll call you sometime today and explain why he didn't wait for us. Maybe he's in concert or something. If you'd gotten up a little bit earlier this morning, we would have been there in time to meet him. From now on, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm going to be very dependable. Now, seems to me I've heard that line. Well, this time I need it. You just tell me what to do and I'll do it. All right. The first thing both of you can do is to get out of here and let me get my work done. Dr. Borden's going to be here any minute and I've got an awful lot of typing to do. Never mind the details. We can take a hand. Wait, I've got an idea. Why not call the prison? Maybe the guard there knows who the men were that met your uncle. Why, that's a splendid idea. See, I'm beginning to be dependable already. I don't mind robbing the safe, but what have we got to take this zombie with us for? One reason is he's strong as a bull. Another is that Dagger can switch on that magic eye and watch him. Us, too, if we're close enough to him. I'm afraid we're going to double cross him, is he? He's probably got that set focused on us right now. Thank you very much. The guard doesn't know who the men were. Well, there goes that idea. Well, we'd better get out of here and let Linda get her work done. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Everything's on schedule. There goes Brennan with the truck. Look, that's the guy we were chasing this morning. Sure looks like it. Those three men just alighted from it, sir. And Martin Warren isn't with them. Come on, I have an idea the Batman should look into this. And don't forget Robin. 
Alfred, drive into that alley and put the top up. Yes, sir.
Rebecca, the sinister Jap spy, believes Linda knows the whereabouts of the powerful radium gun. And what about Linda? Can she escape his evil clutches? Don't fail to see The Bat's Cave, Chapter 2 of Batman at this theater next week.